Greetings and welcome to the first episode of Slay the Spire. And I'll be honest, I'm not really good at this game at this point. I, I hope that I'll improve as I actually keep playing. And if you have any advice, just leave them in the comments. I know a lot of people don't like backseating, but I kind of like it because I feel like it gives me a good purpose or at least a good reason to learn something new. So if you see me doing something very silly or if you feel like I could do something better, just leave that in the comments. You can backseat me all you want and hopefully we can improve on this journey together. If I don't know what this game is or what it entails, don't worry, I hope it'll become clear. I feel like it's one of those games that becomes very clear as you actually watch it, uh, much more than when you actually play it. So without further ado, let's just embark on the journey and see where it takes us. I did try to play this daily once, uh, just like 20 minutes ago, and I ended up losing very quickly, so I just decided to retry it because, you know, having a 10 minute video for my first Lady Spire daily, I don't think that's gonna be good in my record. Uh, it, it's a very special daily, not a special daily, essentially every daily in this game, uh, besides just being a regular game, also has some modifiers. So in this case, we start with one rare relic, which is this one, essentially every time we play a power, we heal for 2 HP. Uh, there are more elite enemies on the spire, so these are these icons in particular, and essentially these are just stronger variations of regular enemies, and the card wards now only contain two cards, which again is a little bit difficult. So this particular daily does seem like a difficult one to me, so I expect to just die very fast and very soon. Uh, the path I took on my previous route was like this, and then I just ended up dying the first elite, which is unfortunate. So, you know, let's maybe try a different route. I know this is maybe some cheating of some sort in some sense, uh, but, but you, you know, let's just go with it. Maybe if you go here, 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 we only face two elites, and there are a lot of question marks, and I think two bonfires of some sort. Uh, I would like to maximize the pit stops I have at bonfires, so maybe, wait, maybe this one? Oh, this just dodges all elites altogether. I like, maybe I like this a little bit more. Let's start here and just kind of make, make our way up. We're gonna decide as we actually go along. So, first the worms. So, whenever you hit these worms, uh, they actually gain some shield or armor. So, I think neutralizing this guy is gonna be beneficial to us. We can strike this guy. And we can defend for 5 and just strike this one as well. Now, the reason why I don't strike this guy again, because he's already at 5 HP, so the next time I get the strike, which deals 6 damage and I just end him, there's no reason to push to 3 armor, um, because at the end of the turn, the armor kind of disintegrates. So, it's essentially meaningless, so there's no reason for you to try to p punch through armor. So if you don't have enough damage to punch through armor, uh, there's no reason to, to actually attack it because it's just gonna disappear at the end of the turn. So, because I knew my, my strikes deal 5 or 6 or whatever damage, uh, I, I knew I could take him on that particular turn. So there's no reason for me to attack him one more time. And when the armor disappears, I can just destroy him. So I just decided to focus this one just to maybe bring him down a little bit lower. They, they can also weaken you, as you saw there, which reduces my total attack points and damage. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but once you get used to it, it's fine. I think it's one of the most annoying debuffs, because it really does mess up with your calculations. But if you're good at the game and you know what the enemies actually do, you can actually play around that and predict it, uh, to some extent. Now, looking at these two cards, Shiv... I think accuracy is a good card generally if we can get the shifts or maybe we can force it but because I feel like this is a hard daily we need some early offensive punch and because there's a lot of elites I feel like dagger spray might be useful especially because there are a lot of enemies uh, no, not a lot of enemies, but there are some enemies w which actually come in multiple stages. Not not multiple stages, but there are multiple enemies at the, at the same time on the screen so having an AoE might be useful. Um, usually I don't think I would take it because it's not that good of a card, but but in this situation it seems like it would be a wise choice. So we got a golden idol, which means enemies drop more gold, and we need to take a curse. Either 5 max HP, 17 damage. This can be annoying and kind of scary, especially if we don't have a lot of bonfires, but let's just go for it. I, I think they're called campfires in this game, not bonfires. This is just Dark Souls speaking. Uh, so neutralize you, obviously, that's the first thing we do because it's free. Defend. And now we can just strike him twice. So far, so good. First turn wasn't too terribly bad. Uh, I know a lot of things in this game are seeded, but what I'm wondering is draw order seeded. So essentially, if I play uh, the, the same daily twice, am I guaranteed to get the, the same draws every time I play it, provided I have the same card to this, the same spot? Now, I feel like that may, might be a bit hard to code, but it's entirely possible. So if you know maybe what's going on behind there, uh, I would like to know. I I'm just interested, like from a purely engineering perspective, if that's a thing. Now, there are three stages, so this is essentially the first stage. Once you get to the end, you fight the boss. In this case, we're fighting 
some flame spirit guy, he can be quite scary. <laughs> Uh, but there are essentially two more stages after that, they're just as long as this one. And I think a run usually takes uh, anything from like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, it really does depend on just maybe how invested you are, how slowly you go, like in, in my case I don't think a run can be under 30, 40 minutes, just because I do tend to play a bit slowly, at least at this point in time I can just destroy him. Uh, but. but there's also just, I would say, a lot of floors you have to actually get to to, to get to a certain point. Now, Dagger Troll, I don't like either of these two cards. Uh, Dagger Troll can, does have its uses, uh, because essentially it draws you a card and discards you one, so it gives you some options. Masterful Stuff, I don't think we're ever gonna enable it, especially hard daily like this one. I just feel like we need some offense, uh, at least for the early floor, and then maybe we can start removing those cards later on, if they prove to be ineffective. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to bloat your deck too much, obviously. You, you want to take cards that will be relatively good. I do think the Dagger Troll might be a little bit better than Dagger Spray. Like, Dagger Spray is very situational. It's not that much more damage than just a regular strike on one enemy, but it's a lot better when you have multiple enemies. But sadly, I, I wouldn't say that it's really warranted. Like, there are not so many enemies in the game that, uh, that you could justify picking up uh, dagger troll just because of its AoE ability. Now one thing that happened there was uh, I, I had that when, when you have the ability to draw a card that's usually a good idea to, to do first that's just a rule of TCGs or like any card games in general if you can draw draw first you can see what your options are but I knew what I was gonna do in that turn so I wasn't really too worried about it. So in this case Piercing Will uh, it seems like a good defensive option. Poison Step does seem a little bit better than it is, but because we're not really running a Poison Archetype, I think a Piercing Will would, will, will just be slightly better. Again, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it, because I know that this particular enemy has a few attacks which are like multi-stage attacks, and essentially if an enemy is gonna hit you like 5 times for 6 damage, uh, reducing their strength by 6 is gonna nullify that to 0, so it's 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 very effective in that particular term. Again, I feel like I have a lot of situational cards at this point, uh, but they might be something that's gonna actually gonna help me get through the game. At this point, Piercing Will essentially functions as a block for 6, uh, which might be useful, and this guy's actually attacking us. So I think we should try our best to defend. So this is one defend, and thing. I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna do a dagger spray. I can take I can I can take two damage. I think that's that big of a deal. Health is only as important. Uh, I mean health is only important as long as it's above one, right? That's that's a general rule that we try to abide. Now when this guy goes to his half HP, I think he splits. And his So if he's at 70, that means 34, I think, is his breaking point. So 34, 60 minus 34 is something like 26, I don't think I can do that much damage at this point. No reason uh, to, to, to get feisty, just do this, right? No, no no reason to get fancy, just defend twice and just throw a dagger at his face or at his slime. I'm not really sure how a dagger actually affects this guy, because he's just a bunch of slime you'd think it'd go right through, but it, I, I'm not here to, to make that judgment. If I strike it twice, it's not enough to make him split, uh, but the next turn I can. And I could have played the slime, like, th th this guy gives you slimed cards, which are called slimed, literally, in your deck, and you have to play them to get rid of them. Uh, this is gonna be pretty good. I can attack him three times, and essentially when you split him, he, he, he loses his initiative, so he can't do his action that he was trying to perform. Now, what's really good uh, about having Dagger Troll in this particular case, not Dagger Troll, but Dagger Spray, which we are guaranteed to draw, because it's the next card in our deck, uh, is the fact that it deals damage to both of them at the same time. So when you have multiple enemies, you can obviously see the benefit there. Okay, this is this is good. I would have loved to have another attack, but sadly I don't. Weekend is not so terribly bad. I don't think each particular enemy of this type deals a lot of damage. Another dagger throw, that's great. And I think that's just it. Awesome. Awesome. We got through it. Well, it plans, I think, is generally good and because we have the bird faced urn i'm gonna take it i'm not really too terribly happy about like the power level of our cards but we're we're getting to it slowly i'm thinking if i should smith or if i just should just heal like upgrading this to retain up to two cards seems very very useful 
Neutralize having two weak is also very very useful. Now I'm just thinking there's another bonfire here. I mean campfire and if I actually want to go if I feel really frisky I can go left and then I can kind of decide where to go from there. So I think this is gonna give me a lot of options. I think I will upgrade first and heal on the second one depending on how much damage I take in the next boss battle. I mean in the next fight that's right after this one. Now neutralize Hmm. I think I'm gonna upgrade this one. Uh, I, I will generally want to play powers just because they heal me a little bit. So having that power be more effective just seems to make a little bit more sense than just uh, having a skill that's gonna... Uh, that, that's just gonna be marginally more useful. Now again you can see the power of the piercing well when you have multiple enemies at once because you can reduce all of their attacks at the same time. I'm just gonna use it now because I don't think there's gonna be a much better option to, to use it because this guy is gonna die in like one or two turns. There's no... of course I'm gonna pick. Uh, it's always a good idea to, to, to essentially keep two of your cards and not discard any of them because they just get added to the next hand you draw. So it's always a good idea to have more cards in your hand than not, unless maybe you have a draw deck and you can overdraw. Uh, I was talking about something, I kind of forgot. It's, it, I probably got to the end of it, so, so don't worry too much about it. I think when I destroy this guy, oh, he applies vulnerable, so that means that this enemy is gonna deal more damage to me. I don't think that's big of a deal, I can just eliminate him with one swift dagger throw. I can use a survivor, and the question is, do I really wanna attack? No, you know what, I'm just gonna defend, no reason to take any extra damage, I don't have to. I can retain a strike, and then that, that means I only need another strike, which I'm guaranteed to draw, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be pretty good. Two strikes and this guy's a goner. So far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our performance, uh, even though I'm not really doing anything too special at this point in time. Prepared is not that good, Malays. I, I think we already have enough defensive cards that I don't really need another one, so let's just skip it. Now, I, if I'm gonna fight this elite, and I think I do want it, I, I think I'm gonna rest here. And I think uh, I just got the perfect amount of HP to actually utilize that to its fullest potential. Shuriken, every time you play two attacks, gain one strength. Okay, this is pretty good, pretty good. And let's just let's just fight it. Let's just fight the elite Lava Ghoulin. This is the guy that destroyed me on my previous run, so <laughs> let's try to do a little bit better. Now, this guy takes three turns before he actually wakes up. Uh, so I can actually just play well late plans, and I don't think I'm gonna trigger him yet. I think getting Dagger Spell and Dagger Throw the same turn should be pretty useful. And I can neutralize him, no reason not to. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't do anything, but <laughs> no reason not to, I suppose. I'm gonna retain Piercing Well, it's gonna be useful when he actually starts attacking us. Essentially, it's a block for six, like I said before, against one enemy, so... It's better than a regular defend, at least. Okay, so this is a bit awkward, because I know the next turn I'm gonna write... Oh, I can just keep Dagger Spray, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's... I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna keep Dagger Spray and Piercing Well. And drawing to dagger throw, and I can just deal maximal amount of damage on this particular turn. Yeah, he's not awake yet, but he would awake on this particular turn. So let's just deal damage. Essentially, he awakes after three turns, or when you actually deal enough damage to break through his armor. So let's let's just let's just go for it. This thing, yeah, and then I want to do a dagger spray, and then I want to do a strike. Awesome. And of course, uh, I also get uh, the effect from the shuriken. So when I play three cards, I get a strength up. So that's useful. I didn't even think about that, but looking back on it, 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 it paid off to, to, to actually stay vigilant. Now, in this case, I, I just feel like this is just a defense turn. Now, generally speaking, I don't want to defend too much against this guy because he... Um, hmm. I might actually just apply weak to him and just strike him. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Like, I, you, you don't want to defend too ma too much against this guy because what he tends to do is debuff you every now and then. I think it's every third turn, uh, so it can get to a point where you're just not dealing a lot of damage. Now it's not that big of a deal because we have a Shuriken, which actually increases our damage the more we attack him to a certain extent. Um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So, so it's not that big of a deal that I would consider it urgent, but it's still just something to keep in mind when you're actually fighting him. Now we're dealing quite a lot of damage with these guys, 8 per strike, it's pretty solid I would say. So now he's uh, debuffing us, which means we can just go ham. Great, another shuriken pop, I think I'm gonna retain 2 strikes, maybe 1 defend. Yeah, he's gonna be attacking, so I think having a defend could be useful. 
survivor and defend for 13 damage and he's weakened and just another strike on top of that that that, that seems like a solid turn or just do this. this this seems to be quite successful too so defend survivor i know i'm not healing i'm not healing i'm not defending for for full damage but maybe i should have retained two strikes in this scenario yeah, that doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We're still ahead of the curve here. Uh, because I deal A damage and if I draw three of them... Oh, oh he's just dead. It didn't really matter. Great, great three. It, yeah, if I kept one, uh, it, it, my chances of actually killing him would have been a lot higher. Oh, Regal Pillow. Heal an additional 15 HP when you rest. That seems pretty useful. Burst is really good, but I don't think I can actually utilize it in any shape or form. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't really have any skills. And Grand Finale, well, it seems like a really good card. I don't think I'm gonna be able to enable it. Like, it feels a little bit situational for me. Now, maybe if I had another deck or maybe if I took a bag of preparation, something could have happened there, but... Yeah. Okay, so let's just remove a strike. I think a strike, one strike is not gonna be that influential. We can just remove it from our deck. And I think hitting the shop here and then another elite could be potentially beneficiary. So let's do that. Okay, so what is this? Whenever you break an enemy's block, apply two vulnerable. This seems really good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. A dash. Now, this might seem useful because essentially get block and damage. This might be something that we want. A poison deck. I don't think we're a poison deck. We're not really a shift deck. So, I think dash here is really the only card that looks appealing to me or just actually using this. I'm gonna pick the trinket because it looks like it's relatively good and because it's just something that seems like it's gonna be... Not nice, especially with enemies that keep reapplying shields to them. Like it seems like this would be really good against them. Maybe I'm just really off the base here, and maybe this trinket actually sucks. But <laughs> let's just see where it takes us. I felt like it was better than just taking a random dash, even though that particular card could prove to be useful. Okay, so we debuffed him. I think one survivor is going to be enough, and just do this. I also got a shuriken, which is great. Again, I never plan for shuriken, but whenever I get it, I'm really happy about it. Uh, he took okay so uh, well laid plans for that little bit of healing uh, dagger throw to for it uh, I deal 14 damage which is not enough to end him I'm gonna debuff him and just defend no reason to take any damage if I don't have to and I can still retain a strike great great at some point he essentially steals your money and at some point he just kind of runs away and yeah, now he's shielding and then the next turn he's gonna run away. So we don't want to let him do that, but it's okay because he's officially dead. He's deceased. Another dagger spray, I don't think we really need it or it's necessary. But then again, because we have Shuriken, which actually buffs our strength, dagger spray gets the double benefit of that essentially. Oh, I just remember there was a card which actually had an effect of dealing... 3 damage 5 times, and looking back on it because we have Shuriken, that might have been very useful. I'm gonna take Dagger Spray because of that reason. I know that Northern Lion in particular took a lot of Dagger Sprays, and people kinda hated him for it, so... Uh, if the Dagger Spray is actually a horrible card, please let me know. <laughs> I would, I, I'm very much interested in what you have to say in that regard. Right, right. So, so far, so good. Essentially, this guy, every time you use... Uh, a defend or something or a skill essentially he actually gets more strength so you want to kind of reserve those and not really uh, defend too much like it's okay to take some damage against him uh, especially in I, I think in our case it works a little bit better because uh, we have regal pillow which means we can afford to take damage because we're obviously gonna rest before the boss uh, powers are a-okay though okay so this is just unfortunate <laughs> I mean 21 damage now, the question is, hmm, I think there's a good chance that I can actually end him. Like, defending three times here might not seem like a good idea, mainly because he's, he can hit like a truck. Uh, but my idea is that this, this is going to save me more health on the long run, especially if I can actually just end him now. So, okay, apparently not. He's just going to deal a lot of damage. No, but I think this is fine. Uh, I actually should have reordered it. I should have attacked with my lowest attacking cards first. Uh, because then I would have gotten strength and my dagger cross could actually benefit from that. So that was a bit of a bad of an ordering, but still worked out pretty well. Die, die, die. This seems excellent. I mean, not excellent. A Storm of Seal might actually be really useful, because essentially every single shiv is going to be buffed 
by shuriken yeah let's go let's go this route let's go this route and not only that every time i use it uh, every time i use the shift i'm also gonna get additional damage so th that seems like it's gonna kind of strategize really well with shuriken so <laughs> here goes nothing i suppose the f the first egg boss so I'm drawing a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah, of course, because I have the Ring of the Snake, which allows me to draw two additional cards, and I have Bag of Preparation, which also allows me to do, to draw two additional cards. I, I think the general plan is just play the most offensive attacks, which will actually stack up your Shuriken. And the best part is we're not really too worried about drawing something we have to discard, uh, mainly because we have well-retained plans and we can... Not well-retained, but we have... What's the name? Oh, it's a power. <laughs> it, it's it, the retain cards card, right? So in this case, uh, see, the piercing well is just so good here, because we can take six of his strength away and it reduces his damage from 36 to zero. And now we can play Storm of Seal, which I think is going to be the best play here. And essentially discard my entire hand and just go hand with the shifts. And this not only stacks my shuriken once, but it also just deals a ton of damage. Now, the problem here is I can't retain any cards for the next turn, but it is what it is. Now, ideally, we wouldn't want to take any damage against him, but I've, I already see that this is possible because I drew no defense. <laughs> now, a Storm of Seal is good in a situation like that, I think, because it essentially allows you to maximize your damage. But in the case like this, when I only have attacks in my hand, uh, there's no reason not to use just these attacks because they're just more powerful than this card is. I can always retain it and just kind of save it for later and just use it when I feel like it's going to be more beneficial. Now this is a shame because I think if you don't take any damage you actually get extra points on your daily. But for this one, if I get like to the third stage I'm already going to consider it a success. So <laughs> let's just try to achieve that and go from there. Now I know for a fact that we heal um, when we beat them. So I don't think the fanning here is actually necessary. I'm just going to storm still again and just go hand with the shifts. Now. If I knew that I'm gonna get this card, accuracy is would obviously gonna be the better choice at the start, but you really can't know in advance. Like, picking up accuracy now would obviously be great, but picking up accuracy before this one, I feel like, would just be a mistake. I'm gonna block once, no reason not to. Uh, let's just try to prevent the damage he can deal to us. Just another strike. Retain a block. Great, great. I feel like I'm speeding up a little bit. That's probably pretty useful. I mean, that's gonna be much better to watch, I think. I think there are fast animations that you can enable it in, in the in the options, and that might be something I want to look into. Uh, not now, because I'm still I still feel unsure with the entire game in general. But if, if animations are gonna take a bit too long, I'm gonna enable it. So far, this seems like a very not trivial fight, but we have the strategy figured out, so we we kind of know what we're doing. And, and you see, so now, right? I, I blocked his shield, uh, and I applied to vulnerable because of the trinket. I find that when you play a, a strategic game like this, actually commentating it out loud really helps you with not just the strategy, but just the way you approach it. And I, I feel like it gives you more insight as opposed to just playing it slowly and just playing on autopilot. This is gonna be a great potion. Unload, discard all non-attack cards. Now, Thousand Cuts might be really, might seem useful because of the shifts, uh, and we essentially just play a lot of cards in general. Let's go for it. I, I feel like it's a little bit crazy, but uh, maybe not. Maybe not. It really depends if you get an energy relic. I don't think we can afford it just on its own. Uh, let's go for it. I'm, I don't think it's a good card, but it just seems fun, so <laughs> let's take it. Five cards, obtain one potion, a cursed key. Now, I think a curse key is going to be just the best choice here because it gives you energy. Now, of course, the curses that you get when you open non-boss chest can be a little bit painful, but I think the energy is going to make up for it. Especially since there are more elites, I think there are less chests uh, just because elites tend to replace chests, so I think it might be a good idea because of that. Yeah, there's only one chest. I think there are typically two chests on the floor, but because there are more elites now, there's only one. So I, I think it's a good choice because of that. And we generally want to hit the shop so we can actually remove a curse. So I think this particular path is going to be beneficial, or this one. Uh, is, is there a shop on the other side? No, so we're definitely sticking to the left side here. And we kind of want to, I won't say minimize the amount of elites, but I think like this entire left path is just the best option. So let's go here. 
Now this is probably the hardest thing to commentate because it's very hard to see what my thought process is as I'm actually thinking where to go, but maybe just trust me for now. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't trust me because I'm really bad at this game, but uh, try to find it in your soul to trust me. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Uh, yeah, I thought that hand drill might be useful for exactly enemies like this. Because what this guy has is plated armor, and essentially every turn he applies this much armor on top of what he had before. So essentially it's like permanent armor to some extent, but every time you deal damage this number gets reduced by 1. And essentially if I actually am, am able to break through at least once, I apply vulnerable, which means it's gonna be easier to break through the second time. And uh, it just, just all in all I feel like it's gonna be really good for getting through this. And I, I, I assume that's why it's called a hand drill, because you drill through enemy's armor. Uh, let's draw first. I should have done that at the start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because we have uh, well-laid plans, uh, retaining or at least keeping powers is not that bad. And because we actually picked up an energy, energy lyric, uh, relic, <laughs> uh, a thousand cards might actually be useful here. Now, a thousand cards plus a storm of seal is the dream, because that's just gonna deal so much damage on its own. Uh, but I think I still want to defend, so I'm just gonna do this, and I'm, I'm gonna play a thousand cards and just a dagger spray. Now, taking two damage is not a problem at all because we can heal that up by, by essentially playing any power we have left in the deck. I, don't, I, I mean, not in this particular combat because you can only play one power. I, I mean, one of particular card that is a power per combat, but on the next one, it's it, like losing two damage is not that big of a deal, that's what I'm trying to say. So, neutralize is just worse than a shift, so I'm not actually gonna use it. Uh, I'm gonna dagger throw him first just to draw a card. Doesn't really matter what we discard here. Okay, so the question is can I end him? And this is gonna be more useful. I think I can. Yeah, it should be relatively easy. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I have a lot of damage. Okay, so far so good, so good, so good. Uh, game 5 mate. Yeah, this is gonna be much better than I think something like a po poison potion. Get out. Acrobatics? I don't think it's necessary. I don't think another deck of choice is necessary either. I think the deck as it is now works, at least it will work for the foreseeable future. Uh, but but if maybe something goes astray, we're just gonna... We're gonna see where it goes. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I can just use this and that's great. Now, I'm gonna play... I should have played this first, admittedly, because I, I would have gotten one more damage as a result, but whatever. Hmm. So we can land one bird and I think I'm gonna land this guy. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine, it's fine. I, I thought I, I, I saw something. No, I can't actually land them. I'm gonna drink this because it's five, ma five max HP. Now the question is, do I take 10 damage to land this guy? I think the answer to that might be yes. Now, this might seem a little bit silly, but the thing is, if I actually let him buff, maybe it wouldn't be a problem because I could have just retained piercing well and reduced his strength. So what I was thinking there was, uh, if I let him buff, he's gonna do a lot more damage next turn, essentially his damage doubles. But I, I think it was a problem, what I failed to kind of account for is the fact that Piercing Well reduces up to 6 strength, so him actually being in that stage wouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, but but still, uh, I think it's, it's gonna work out well, because I got 2 Dagger Sprays, and Dagger Sprays are just amazing against these guys, because they deal so much damage. Um, essentially, this every... Not only is everyone hit twice, but they also... So, so you need three hits to actually land the bird from its flying position to its laying position, I suppose. And not only does, uh, the, 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 does the dagger throw deal damage to all birds at once, it also deals two instances of damage at the same time. So it, it's really good against them. Both of these suck. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna skip them both. Having 65 HP, not that big of a deal, like I said before. Yeah, I definitely want to remove, but what would I want to remove is the question. Another strike, I think. The fans, uh, I think, tend to be useful. So I just remove a strike. Oh. It was... Uh, the, 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 the prompt surprised me. I, I didn't realize the beggar was a cleric. I mean... <laughs> I don't know why he's playing around with people like that, but... Okay, so I think this is just a very easy, well laid plans in a Storm of Seal kind of turn. I don't think playing this is gonna be... Maybe. No, 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 no. 
no, no, no. Let's just go full sentry. Let's just try to do as much damage as we can. And because we have a thousand cuts, it should be pretty useful. I like how the... Uh, how Not bugged, but how the cards actually queue. That was an excellent turn without a lot of damage there. See, this guy, the, the whole ammo of this guy is he's a ball, he's like a furry ball, or maybe like a stone ball. He seems a bit furry to me, uh, and he just blocks a lot. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not a good ammo, I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, so in this case, because we have the thousand cuts, it's actually beneficial for us to play our cards out, even if they don't, don't do anything. So in the case of the fans, like if we have enough block, you don't need to block more in, in general, because... You don't get any benefit out of it, except you're wasting time, but because we have a thousand cuts, it's a good idea just to play those cards out. Okay, so this is 20 damage? <laughs> that seems like a lot. I'm gonna defend. Yeah, defend. Dagger spray, and I think a storm of steel. No, I no reason to play a storm of steel, because strikes do more damage. I was like, oh, I can play them for free, but you forget that you have to pay two energy for storm of steel in the first place. It's it just quick mats. Okay, so I think I can break through his shield. Oh, one good thing about Storm of Steel is it can actually get rid of cards like status effects. Like in this case, it's not good because this goes away. Like it exhausts itself when you end your turn. Uh, but if you have other status effects like wounds or whatever that you can't naturally get rid of, a Storm of Steel is just great because essentially it's giving you, it's replacing that card with something that's actually useful. Now, playing Piercing Will here might seem like a good idea, but it's not actually going to do anything uh, because he has artifacts and artifacts actually block. I think I'm just going to go, like, I'm going to do this and just going to go for a Storm of Steel. No reason not to, I think. Like, sure, taking 10 damage on the nose is going to be a little bit silly, but I also think I can just end his, his life at this point. Yeah. I figure that's something that might happen. I, I should have really done the man before, but... Intangible, that's really good. It makes him vulnerable for one turn. So essentially, it's like a gimme for one turn and enemies can damage you. That's really useful. I think upgrading my defense here might not be that bad of a choice. Now, I think I need some strikes to actually keep the, the combo going. So I think this might be one of the rare occurrences where upgrading strikes and defense is going to be uh, better than just straight up trying to get rid of one. Okay, so, so far... Oh... Wait, I have three dagger sprays in my deck? No, this is a dagger throw. But very different. <laughs> and this is just an excellent, like, just an excellent turn. Yeah, obviously, this is this is the best turn of my life. I'm gonna do this, Storm of Steel. I can just slowly end their lives. Nice, and I actually got two strength out of that, almost three, to some extent. That was great. Uh, picking up Curse Key was definitely the right choice there. I, I, I was doubting myself for a moment, but looking back on it, I definitely think it was the right choice. Okay. So good, so good. I, I do see that when you have a deck like this, having fast animations <laughs> might be might be good, but uh, it's fine, it's fine. We're getting through it slowly. I think we're in a good spot, like in general. I feel good about this deck so far. So this is 11 damage, I probably can get it to 12, so... I don't think a strength potion is really gonna do much for me. And because this week is only one turn, let's just do this. I think this is a save. Oh, of course, uh, I have the thousand cuts. Yikes, okay. I I'm gonna use one defend and not two. I I'm gonna save both of them because I feel like one of them is gonna prep up a, a large attack. I know this guy charges up and that just has a huge attack that just destroys you. Uh, but I feel like this guy hasn't attacked in a while, so he might start doing that now. And I was wrong. <laughs> that happens, I suppose. Okay. I think a Storm of Steel... No. Definitely a Strike first. And a Storm of Steel second. And I can just use my shifts on this guy, because I have the Thousand Cuts. Which means that the little guy will just automatically die. Great, great. So far, so good. Like, this, 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 this seems like a good deck. This seems like a good deck. Minion, minion, okay. Oh, two dagger sprays. Say no more. Especially with the stacked up shuriken, we're just doing so much damage. No reason to defend here. We can just strike him. 3 HP. Yeah, we got him. We got him. I think we actually took damage on this particular boss fight, but that's also because he never attacked. I mean, too little too late, my friend. <laughs> too little too late. 
Ginger, you can no longer become weakened. Oh, that's great. That's actually really useful. Bullet time, I don't think it has that big of an effect in our particular deck. A lot of our cards are free. Now, it might be useful for something like... Nah, I don't think it's needed. I don't think it's needed. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> A thousand cuts. It goes to two damage. Oh, that seems useful. Add one upgrade that you... Oh, that also seems pretty useful. Like, that's extra three damage per shiv. And this is just extra damage. Like, I think on the long run, this might be... This might do more damage than the other one. But I think both upgrades are viable. So whatever you choose, I don't think you can really go wrong there. Now... Do I take a 50% chance? I know I'm gonna get another curse, so... I'm, I mean, I know it's not the most ballsy place, but this is my first episode. I don't want to lose for a silly <laughs> for a silly reason. Uh, I do want to go to the shop here. And... Oh, wait. I didn't think this through. Because if I go to the shop here, I actually have to fight two elites. But there's a... You know what? Let's, let's bow. Beak testosterone plays, or I don't know what the Twitch memes are now, nowadays. I definitely want to get rid of this. Panache could be really useful. I didn't think about picking that up first. Yeah, this is never gonna happen. I'm always gonna attack during my turn. Now, this is... Not, none of this seems very particularly useful to me. So let's just go. Now, another reason why I opted to go for two elites there, because I have what I would say are good potions, which can really be helpful and useful. Now, the question is, do I go a thousand cuts and just a storm of steel and just deal as much damage as possible? Or do I maybe survive? I'm, I think I'm going to do a dagger spray, a survivor and a storm of steel. Even though I upgrade a thousand cuts, which I realize, you know, it's a bit ironic at this point. Uh, this, this is gonna be great, because I can just... I can land this guy. Maybe I can even end him. Uh, almost. Almost. I think it's worth it to bring him to one, and then I only have this guy to deal with. I think this particular guy, every time you use a skill... Like, he, he can buff himself so that every time you use a skill or a power, uh, he... Had no reason to play any defense. Uh, he actually puts a daze in your deck, and a daze... Just doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It takes up a slot, which are not, which is not too terrible with our particular configuration, uh, because we can get rid of them with the, the storm of tornadoes. I mean, a storm of daggers, <laughs> dagger storm. I'm not sure what it's called. A storm of steel. Sure, that there, there it is. Thank you for putting the word in my mouth. Now, is this the best choice? Probably not, but I feel like it did its job. Now, sure, we got one days in our deck, but it's just one. One is not that big of a deal. Oh, he tried to weaken me, but we have Ginger. Ha! Huh. In your face. Now, in this case, I think just defending twice is gonna be our best option. It's just full block, and we can save a thousand cuts for next turn. And he's basically already dead. He only has 22 HP. Now, Dazed is... Oh, Dazed... Dazed... The plural of Dazed. Dazed is... Uh, do become more dangerous. Uh, the less of the cards you have in your draw pile. Because the more cards you play, obviously, the higher chance... It is that you're gonna draw into dazes, and they kind of prevent you from getting to your discard pile, and that can be a little bit annoying. I think vulnerable here is just gonna be the best choice, like terror. This this is amazing. It's a zero cost card, to strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of the artifact potion. Give me more strength. Uh, I do intend on using one of these potions on a on like a, a fight especially a fight like this one this guy is really scary i think a thousand cuts first i don't think there's an option here well like plans plans for sure and maybe defend defend and defend and that's gonna be enough and i can just retain a dagger spray and a dagger throw or maybe i should retain a survive no 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 let's just go full offense i feel like i have enough defense in my black deck to, to justify this Playing the terror on him should be pretty useful when I actually get to it. Yeah, no question. I also neutralize him because it's free, no question. I'll do a dragger throw to draw a card first. That's 12 damage. I can defend 16 with two cards, so I don't need a piercing well right now. Nice, nice. This is excellent. 
save a strike. I wish that they just let you retain cards automatically, although I do realize that sometimes you don't want to do that, but I think in the average case you do. It would just save a little bit of time at the end. Again, 21 damage, I can defend for 16. Yeah. I think playing a Storm of Steel here is going to be better for me because I can trigger one Shuriken as opposed to just dealing damage to him. And because I already have the, the, the a thousand cuts, an upgraded one, uh, I think this is going to be also a little bit more damage in the long run. I just think this is going to help me kill him a bit faster. Uh, this book essentially, I think every time he damages you, he puts one wound in your deck, which is super annoying. Now a Piercing Will here is just amazing, right? Because it reduces all of his damage to zero, essentially. Now, playing this and playing another Fant is just gonna deal a little bit of damage. I'm not gonna play Survivor, I want to have some block for next turn. Although I'm guaranteed to draw into another one, but he seems to be just doing more and more damage every single time. Is it gonna be 6 times 5 now? No, 4. Oh, it is gonna be 6. So he just deals 6 for... Oh god. <laughs> I need to get rid of this boy ASAP. I think the best way to do that would be just do this. And just Storm of Steel, I think. No, Strike and Storm of Steel, yeah. I did use up one of the strong strength potions, but I think it was necessary because otherwise I would have just taken too much damage. Another thousand cuts! Am I that crazy? Let's go. <laughs> Let's... He's actually done it. A Storm of Steel has, proved, has proven useful, but this is, just, this is just more memes, you know? When you have an option, just go for the memes. Is it an overkill? Absolutely. Like, there's no question about it. Having 2000 cuts is just such an overkill that I can't even begin to describe how, no, how, how, how much of an overkill it is. Now, a piercing well. Either I take a piercing well. Oh, no, no. I'm gonna play a piercing well now uh, because I can always play this later. Uh, I, I thought about keeping it in my hand, but obviously that's impossible. Now, taking a thousand cuts. I have two dagger sprays. No, this is just gonna be superior, I think. No, it's definitely not as much damage as I would want it, maybe, but... Who should I focus on? Maybe the big guy? No, I think I should just focus on the guy that has the least HP. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be really scary. Like, I'm taking a lot of damage here. And now, I only need one rest, so this is this should be good, and I think because I have the intangible, I can also pop a strength potion. Now, I should have popped a strength potion before if I was planning on popping it at all. But yeah, we're gonna see how this actually turns out. Yeah, terror here, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's whew. it's fine, it's fine. I'm just gonna reduce him and just defend twice. Yeah, this is fine. Why am I even worrying about it? I, I can defend all of the damage he's doing. Now, Ginger is really good here, I feel like, because if he does weak me... Oh, he, I just can't play attacks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> Unfortunate, I would say. I keep both of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. Gosh, this is not looking too terribly good. Or maybe not, maybe it's not looking that... I think... As, when I get the first guy, the second guy is gonna fall quickly after him. Yeah, I have... Hmm. Let's think about this. Yeah, Dagger Cho just gets this guy. This deals 10 damage. No, th th this just destroys this guy. That's fine, this is fine, this is fine. I neutralize on this phase. So Strike does the same damage as Dagger Cho? Okay. I think... Doing this... And a storm of steel here, and this, this, this is gonna be best. Yeah, sure, I take a lot of damage, but I can heal for like 31, I think, which should put me. I mean, it, it, it's not ideal, but I think it's gonna be enough to, to just deal with this guy, and he's just. His life is over. Nice, nice. Poison potion, nightmare burst. No, none of them seem too particularly good. We definitely need to rest, and every time we rest, we also get a choice of a card. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like any of it. The champion. Now, okay, this this is this is. I think this is a pretty good fight. I know he cleanses his debuffs at a certain point, but that might not be that big of a deal to me. 
I think I'm just gonna prep everything. Yeah, let's just prep everything. Is Terror here? I'm, I'm gonna retain Terror basically until he cleanses himself and then I'm just gonna try to do as much damage as I possibly can. I think that's gonna be a good idea. So essentially what happens when you, I think, reach the halfway point, he cleanses all of the debuffs, so if I apply Terror now, uh, he would just say no and just get rid of it. So I wanna avoid that because it's, it's I would like to retain Terror essentially. <laughs> I would like to uh, get through his second phase much quicker than the, than the first stage, because on his second stage he actually becomes a little bit more aggressive and he, ha he actually has attacks that can do more damage in the, in the first phase. I hope this made sense. I know I'm kind of all over the place with the commentary, but that's mainly because I'm not really used to, 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 to this type of game, or at least commentating this type of game. But it's fine, we're, we're doing well, I think. We're doing well. We're just gonna poison him, no reason not to. Yeah, this is a bit annoying, but at the same time... I'm gonna piercing... No, 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 no. No, no reason to piercing him now, I think. We can afford to take some damage. Now, yeah, playing intangible here might have saved us and got us the perfect, but... Let's just keep it safe, you know? It's about survival, not about getting the highest score in this particular one. Uh, Storm is still... Yeah, definitely. No reason to play anything else, I think. Take your time, game. Don't, don't rush it, you know. Take your shivy time. There's just a lot. You call that a weapon? I mean, it is a pretty puny weapon, right? It's rather small. But I feel that it's just rude. You can't, you can't insult my weapon, sir. Yeah, both of this, they all deal so much damage. And it's stacking up. I love it. I love it. I think he's gonna cleanse now, or maybe the next turn, defensive stance. Yeah, no big deal. This is actually gonna be really good for us, because we can... If we can break through his shields, he's gonna get... He's gonna be vulnerable. No, we can't, though. Or maybe we can, maybe this counts as breaking through the shield. Oh yeah, we will, because we have the thousand cuts. I keep forgetting. Okay. Keep both of these cards. I feel like I'm gonna need both the defense and the offense to actually deal with him properly. I love his little crown. Like, it doesn't even make sense how the hell does it stay on top of his head there? How does it not just fall off? But, you know, kudos to this guy. Yeah, this is why I wanted to keep the piercing well. I felt like he had, like, a strong attack coming up. I'm not sure if he actually debuffed, but whatever. We'll see, I guess. When you're vulnerable for 101 turns, you know that you've taken the wrong path in your life somewhere. And this is just so much damage. Like, can I ignore it? Nah. Great. Yeah, sure, I'm taking a lot of damage, but I heal after this fight anyway, so... And I think I can just end him next turn. I'm pretty positive I can. Depends on what I have. Yeah, Storm of Steel. Yeah, 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 this should be pretty good. Strike, Strike, Storm of Steel. Yeah, this is just so much damage. I, mean, I don't think he has a chance. One really good thing about having... Uh, the well laid plans is that you get to keep you essentially increase your hand size by two every time you retain two cards so playing a storm of steel essentially gives you two more shifts and because you also have a ring of snakes and uh the bag of preparation we also get more, more daggers in return so that's really really good die 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 now it's okay i think but it's not really necessary in our particular decks so i'm not gonna pick it up more energy please energy start of each turn you can no longer smith Address sites? Yeah, I don't think this is a big deal at all. It's the last floor. I feel like I've upgraded what I wanted to upgrade. Now, of course, getting an upgrade Storm of Steel would be great, but it's not a big of a deal because we can rest and at least get a card. Now, I want to hit as many shops as possible because I have so much gold. I, I think it, the, the gold also goes in your end score somewhat, so maybe I don't want to actually hit any shops, but if I go here, that's one shop, one elite. And yeah, if I go here, that those are two elites. Yeah, this is really annoying. If I go in this direction, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, there's only one shop. Okay, so is there a way for me to hit two shops is my question. This is one shop here. No, not without fighting like three elites. And I really don't want to fight elites on this floor. Like at least not more than one, I think. And is this possible? Yeah, I see one path where this is possible if I go on the other path, here, 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 and I can either style... Oh, yeah, yeah, I can hit the shops, yeah. 
I can go here and no I can't what was it? what was I thinking about okay it's fine let's just go here and hit the shop here I, I think an early shop is gonna be better than a late one so let's go there a thousand cuts say no more another thousand cuts say no more uh, th because they're defending this is a great prep turn and yeah this is gonna deal just so much damage I should have terrorized first oh well should I defend? Yeah, I think every bone in my body is telling me to defend. Because I have well laid plans, I can keep the dagger spray for next turn, so it's not that big of a deal. And because they're defending, uh, the, the hand drill is also gonna come in handy here. I don't know if I made all the right plays in this particular run, or if I just got really, really lucky. I'm willing to accept both as an option. <laughs> yeah, this guy just needs to go. I think this, and now a Dagger Spray, is just gonna do so much damage. Yeah? Oh yeah, this is great. Are, are they just both... No, they're not. it's not over, but very close. They take a turn to recharge, and essentially, if you let them live, or at least if you don't kill every single one of them, they come back to life. But I think it's gonna be pretty easy, I think we're guaranteed to get this guy. Okay, so six defense, why not? Uh, but essentially every card I played would have gotten him. I mean, Dagger Spray has been really good to us, and playing another one here, I mean, is it necessary? That's what I'm asking myself. It's upgraded, so I don't think it's necessary, I'll be honest. No, it's not, it's not. Let's visit the shop. Heal three HP, regular enemy. No, I don't need this. I don't need this either. Can, should we remove a card, maybe? Is any particular card anno an annoyance to us, a hindrance? I think every single card in this deck is useful to some extent. Maybe neutralize, but I feel like even that has some benefits at some point, so I'm not gonna... Survivor, I think it's just useless, right? Because uh, it just discards one card, essentially. Let's just remove Survivor. Finisher! Deal 6 damage for each attack you played this turn. Now, this is amazing, isn't it? And the other cards are... Maybe Blade Dance, essentially two attacks for one. Master Strategy is definitely a good card, I mean just draw three cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's go, let's go this way. I feel like this might be really good. Maybe I'm bloating my deck a bit too much, but let's just, let's just see what happens. No question, a thousand cuts, a well laid plans. I think a single defend. Yeah, yeah, I think a single defend is gonna be just good for us. If I do a dagger spray, I'm gonna take 3 damage per hit, I think. So I don't really wanna do this. I do want it to the Storm of Steel, though. And I, maybe I think I want to get this guy first. Mm, yeah. He's gonna debuff me some sort. Oh, I can just go on this guy. He's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is good, this is good. I think this is a good turn. This guy is just taking a lot of passive damage, which means I don't need to directly attack him. So this is this is looking out really well. Really well. Finisher should be useful. Now, I'm gonna take two damage when he explodes, so... Am I really even concerned, though? I don't think I am. Yeah, this is just... This, this just works. It, it just works. It just works. Great, great. This just adds a card to my hand, essentially, so I think this is gonna be a good pickup, regardless. Yeah, I mean, no reason to. <laughs> no need to get greedy, that's what I'm saying. I can either go in this direction, and or either go in this direction. Now, the problem is, because we're gonna visit the chest, we're gonna get a curse and we're gonna be stuck with it. Yeah, I think we should fight the Elite first and then go to the campfire. It's just gonna, I think, it's just a smarter play, right? Duplicate the card in your deck. I didn't want to duplicate it. I, but I think a master, another master strategy is just never bad, right? Because you, essentially it's a free card. This run has been going on for 53 minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> I never knew I had the stamina, to be honest. Well laid plans. Neutralize this boy. Backstab this boy. A master strategy. A 
thousand cuts for sure, a terrorize for sure, another master strategy, a blade dance. I don't see a reason why not. I'm 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 gonna play a huge storm of steels anytime now. No, yeah, yeah, no. This is just I think better. No reason to actually, yeah, no, no reason not to play them. I think at this point. And a storm still. Yeah. Oh, this is great. This is great. This guy in particular is a little bit annoying. Uh, because what he does is he he alternates between attacking you and being intangible, so you can actually you can't actually deal damage to him. Yeah. So this turn he's in intangible, which means that every damage you deal to him is just one damage. Okay. So you're just attacking for a million. I mean, we have a rest site in the next one. I think this is like his big attack. So am I crazy for not wanting to? Yeah, you know what? Whatever. Hit me. See if I care. I mean, I do, but... Hmm. My voice is a bit coarse. I think I, I, I spent too much of yesterday just talking. So sorry if, if maybe I'm not sounding as enthusiastic as I normally do. Just discard the burn, but 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 it's a product of my... I'm a product of my environment. I think it's just... Yeah, he's... Oh, this deck is really good. Gremlin Horn. That's great. Every time you kill an enemy... I mean... <laughs> No, I can't upgrade it. I know it's memes, but this is too many memes. And because I can't upgrade, I I, I can only rest. That, that This is just gonna be a great... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. An accuracy plus. Shifts deal five more damage. That's just amazing. Solid. Solid. This is... Okay, so this, 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 this is going... This is going really well. <laughs> I'm not kidding. A thousand cuts for sure. I should have played that first, obviously. Uh, a dagger spray for sure. I think I just go storm of steels and just focus this bad boy. Yeah, he, he's over with. Oh, I even get because I destroyed him. I get uh, another card I can use and a defend, and that just wow, that puts me in a really good spot. The, the, the slimes really never had a chance. They kind of remind me of Gish. Uh, I don't know if people know that game, but it's one of the games that was made by Edmund McMillan, so the same guy who made Isaac, if you're not aware. Mm. And uh, Gish is a really nice platformer. I, it, it's a bit unorthodox in its movement, and it, I would say it's definitely unique. A lot of people don't like it, but I consider it like to be one of my favorite games in existence. It's just... It has a certain charm to it, I think. So this is going really well. Essence of Steel, four-plated armor. I mean, I don't really need Gambler's Brew, I think. So let's let us let us put that bad boy on. Yeah, this is really good, but I don't think I need it. At this point, I'm not adding cards to the to the deck unless I think they improve them substantially. First time you lose HP, each combat draw two cards and warp paint. Upgrade to random skills. That's so good. Both of those cards that it hit is just so good. Boys, I won't lie, I think we have a pretty good chance here. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, well, you can't lose 1 HP when other cards are played, so if I just play a Storm of Steel here, it's, it just works. It just basically does everything I wanted to do. Now, I would like to play a Finisher. So what I think I'm going to be doing is kind of focusing on these bad boys. Why am I drawing cards? Oh, the first time you lose HP each combat. Oh yeah, and I'm losing HP because of pain. Okay, I got it. I got it. And I think a Storm of Steel here is just gonna be great. I can just get both of these boys and even deal a lot of damage to this fellow. And I still have so much energy left and because I destroyed them I get to play a Master of Strategy, which means I can play this. And I can do even more damage. I'm gonna play this though because it's just a little bit more fun and it heals me to full, which just gives me a sense of satisfaction. Seeing my HP at 100% just makes me feel good. That's why I'm doing it. Master strategy, great. I am absolutely a master of strategy, as you can I, as you can obviously tell because I again misplayed and played a thousand cuts after playing another card that I had in my hand. It's just you know it's just. You wouldn't understand. It's it's just a new level of play that 
Um, I feel like there was a lethal there if I just kind of organized my attacks a little bit better, but whatever. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm obviously a master of strategy. Like, if you can't understand why I would play a thousand cuts second, then I can't help you. Especially because I think if I played it first, he would have actually been dead, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> It just, you know, I, I give myself a challenge sometimes. It's, it's all about a challenge, right? Like, is this silly for me to want to fight another elite? Like, I feel the deck is good enough because there's a red... You know what? You know what? Let's take one chance this run. I I, I didn't take a single chance, but let's take that this one chance. Don't want to remove anything is the question. I think a drag dagger show doesn't really have a big role in our deck anymore. Oh, just remove, of course, remove the pain. Like... Pain. I don't like pain. Life is pain itself, so... Okay, okay. I see where this is going. A thousand cuts first, let's not be silly. Accuracy... Sure. A backstab... Who gets backstabbed? Maybe this guy. Now, a dagger spray will not kill him. But a Blade Dance might do a lot for us, so let's do that first. If I play... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what? The Shivs do so much damage. I'm very happy about this. Now, with the Shiv, I can just get rid of this guy. No questions asked. So let's do that. And I get an energy, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, so th this is just bonkers. A Dagger Spray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just the right choice. And I get another energy and I took damage, which means... Okay, so this 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 deck is popping off. Let's spell defend. You know, let's not take too much... Any unnecessary damage we don't have to take. Uh, and yeah, this guy's just dead, okay. I, I, I did... I think I reduced my damage by a little bit, but... I mean, another intangible? That's so good. Yeah, this is gonna be much more useful than four measly armor. Another dagger spray. I, I mean, is this game... Just trolling me at this point. <laughs> like, th this this deck could have been just dagger sprays and... Uh, what was the other card I kept getting? Oh yeah, a thousand cuts. Like, <laughs> that's what it is. A thousand cuts first, let's not be silly. Accuracy second. A blade dance, give me damn shivs. Uh, let's just neutralize one guy for damage. Uh, backstab some other guy for damage. Let's, I guess, focus. Let's just focus them all at the same time. I mean, there's no reason I need to kill them about at, at about the same time. So, Focus prioritizing one as opposed to the other uh, is not gonna do me any favors. Yeah. Oh, I thought I had well laid plans. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. We're doing well. One thing I'm wondering is why does a thousand cuts have this nice M? I mean, I see that they're supposed to be cuts of some kind, but it, it, it's a nice effect. Don't get me wrong, but it's just, I guess, I'm wondering. Yeah, one is not a goner. What? <laughs> Why are they dealing so much damage? Will I really play one intangible for these bad boys? No, I mean, I'm gonna rest anyway, so there's no reason to, I think. I can get one for sure, and the Gremlin Horn is gonna activate. So let's maybe try this. Oh, yeah. This, I mean... <laughs> And I, I didn't think I would actually be able to end it on this turn, but Gremlin Horn is just really good, apparently. It's the best card in the game, so... I mean, the best trinket in the game. I mean, come on. What do we have that I can take? Who's this bad boy? A sto stony guy. For each hand... For each card played this turn, Giant Head takes 10 more percent damage from attacks. So, are you just saying this is a free win for me? Terror first, for sure. Neutralize, it's free. Backstab, it's free. Master of Strategy, get me them cards, a thousand cuts, a thousand cuts, no question about it. Another Master of Strategy, that's just the way we roll, a Storm of Steel for next turn is gonna be beautiful. And just like a regular strike attack. Okay, keep a Storm of Steel and I think a Dagger Spray, the rest is inconsequential. Now, I thought I was going to do more damage to him, honestly, but then again, it was really just a prep turn. How does this guy wield the sword? I, I mean, I know it's just an icon for attacks, but it just seems so silly. <laughs> How does he wield the sword? How does the madman do it? Oh yeah, look, look at this. This is going to be ridiculous. 
a finisher. And I think a storm was still here. I mean, I'm gonna take so much damage. But whatever. Like, I think you get a bonus every time you don't take a damage against an elite. But since one defend was not gonna be enough anyway, there's no reason not to just go for it. Especially because the next... Uh, the next stop is the rest side, so and I have no other choice but to heal, so might as well take some damage and just get this fight over it a little bit faster. I mean, honestly, the storm will steal me, baby. I think this should be enough to get him. Like, each shift deals just so much friggin' ridiculous damage. And because I have four damage per additional... Yeah, yeah, this is... this is He's, he's just done with. He, has no, he had no chance. Grand Finale, Storm still. I mean, another one is unnecessary, I think. And I have no choice but to rest and maybe add another beautiful card to our hands. But otherwise, I think we're ready for the final boss. The Bird Lord. Oh, he, he has a very similar mechanic to the champion we fought before. And essentially, what happens with this guy is... Uh, this is his first stage, and when you get into zero, he resurrects, cleanses himself of all debuffs, and then... Uh, then has a stage 2, so I want to save my Terrorize for stage 2 for sure. A thousand cuts for sure, that's just... Oh, every time I play a power he buffs himself, right, I forgot about that. I mean, I only have like 3 powers in my deck, so I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal. And I, I feel like my powers, that the ones that I have, are kinda necessary for my deck to work properly, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play them. I think just setting up early here is something that's gonna be beneficial for me. Now, no reason not to pop a Strength Potion, it is the final battle, battle after all. No reason, just save this and save a finisher, I think. Yeah, sure, we're gonna take damage, which is unfortunate. Maybe it could have popped an Intangible, but, you know, it could have been worse, really. I think an Intangible is gonna be more useful, because I know he has attacks which deal multiple instances of damage. I just, w I just really want to use a Storm of Steel here, but I think a Dagger's Prefers is definitely gonna be better. A Blade Dance. Cacaw! I really like the noise they make. Cacaw! <laughs> just satisfying in a way. Accuracy, absolutely amazing. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I guess this is just better odds. I mean, just better value. I think a defense just to, you know, have some defense. And just go for it. No, I think a master strategy first is gonna be better. You know what? I'll, I'll just defend. No reason to get hasty. Uh, I have a way of defending myself. And yeah, no reason to take damage if I don't have to, right? And since I'm actually saving the big place for like the second stage, I'm. I'm I, I'm, not, I'm not really in a rush to, to get him over with as fast as possible. Yeah, well... <laughs> I mean... Mate... <laughs> yeah, this is what I meant when I said I'm glad we have an intangible. <laughs> Just, what, that's ridiculous. I should have maybe seen if I was actually able to deal enough damage to trigger him first, but I don't think that's possible. I mean, it is possible, but not with my current hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine, fine, it's fine, it's fine. I don't wanna maybe discard Terror as of yet, so maybe I'm just waiting for a better card. Having the, the, the Piercing Well here to reduce his strength would have been amazing. Two defense, I think, is just unquestionable. Apparently have a shield. Oh right, because I played when my hand was full and yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay, take some damage here, not a big deal, not a big deal. I think we should have him, but I, I don't wanna be too hasty here. <laughs> You no know, confidence is a slow and insidious killer. We all know that saying. We've all played or seen Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, this is just he's over with on this particular turn. Great. A Gremlin Horn doesn't really do anything for us. I'm gonna keep a Terror, I'm gonna keep a Storm of Steel. Now, I wanna Terror him and then use the Storm of Steel just to do a ton of damage, if that's possible. I think his first attack is gonna be a huge one. 44, yeah, yikes. A Blade Dance, definitely something I want in this case. I think an intangible is also something I want in this case. Uh, I don't think I need a defend, I've already taken damage. I think it's gonna be much better for me just to... Uh, why didn't I play the vulnerable before? Okay, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's definitely a huge misplay. I kinda missed out on like 50 damage there. At least, which might be the difference between life and death to a certain extent. So let's see what happens, I suppose. 
Dark Echo deals one damage. Oh no, he's, it's not that bad. I mean, it's bad, but you know, I expected it to be worse. Especially with Piercing Will, Defend, and another Defend. I don't think he's gonna be doing that much damage. And a Finisher, just to top it off. I mean, he's doing still a lot of damage, but not enough to put me in like lethal range. I don't feel endangered, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But then again, oh, I mean, is his life over? I think it is. Yeah, he, he, he has to be. That's it! We've done it! It's my lucky day, apparently. I don't know if you see it, but it's an achievement. Maybe for beating a daily. I think this is the first daily I've ever played. Not, 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 uh, not played, but beaten. Let's just deal damage. How much score did we get? 777. I think that's a good score. I've definitely... Uh, you saw I only had like 1800 damage in total. So this was definitely a good performance by my standards. Uh, now, I think I could have gotten just a lot more skill in general. And if I actually look at the leaderboards here, uh, I, I just wonder like how good the scores are. Yeah, I mean, there are so many elites in this particular run. I feel like if you know how to play this game, you're going to end up with a good score. But you know, for now, I'm really glad I just got to the end. It's been a long journey. I hope it hasn't been too slow. And with all of that said, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And I hope to see you next time.